Good evening. Welcome to Sightline. Tomorrow, the 11th of February, marks the International Day for Women and Girls in Science. On the occasion of this special day, we invited one of Mongolia's leading female scientists to our studio to talk about multiple intersectional issues such as gender, science, and eco-friendly economic development. Our guest is Dr. Anna Masharhu. She received her PhD degree from the University of Pennsylvania, and currently she's teaching at the National University of Mongolia. Dr. Andrma, thank you for accepting our invitation. Thank you for inviting me. According to the UNESCO data, less than 30% of researchers worldwide are women. Uh, also, female students' enrollment is as low as 3% in information communications and technology field. Mathematics and statistics are 5% and engineering, manufacturing, and constructions are only 8%. Why do you think there are so few women in STEM field? Are they really not interested in science or uh, they're not good at uh, STEM-related field? Okay, so um, let's talk about the STEM-related field. The STEM, we generally talk about the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. And so uh, let's look into the, the, your question. I think it there has uh, like two questions in there. Like mm -hmm. one is, are women good at the science? Mm -hmm. And the other one is, are women, are, interested, are women interested in the science? The researchers who actually do research in, the, in those fields mm -hmm. see that um, there's a bias, inherited bias, in, in, ours, in our society that's actually hindering uh, the women uh, participation in science and girls' enrollment into the, the university. So um, I'm not actually a gender specialist or I'm not actually like scientist in that field. Sure. So those are like not my words. <laughs> those are those, the scientific findings people actually have Absolutely. have actually like research it into that field. So what they have found is that like, firstly, yes, there's a gap. So especially in the early, in, uh, before the 1990s, the boys tend to score higher at the math physics. And you know that like, for example, in, in the, for example, in the National University of Mongolia in the early days, there were like maybe 10 boys in the physics class and only one girl, girl. something mm -hmm. like that. So people tend to think that uh, it's because the girl boys are inherently good at the math and physics, but the girls actually better at the more other fields like humanities or nursing fields. That was the, the belief they uh, used to held. Mm. I guess or still some people may have that belief. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's actually like basically it's almost like a prophecy fulfilling itself kind of thing because they the data actually since the 1990s uh, until the, this day show that girls are nowadays scoring higher than the boys at math physics and other fields in high school in high school mm -hmm. in general the uh, the, uh, the score is getting higher mm -hmm. They are preparing better at the, the standardized tests, but also um, girls are filling those gaps and even exceeding in some in, in some particular fields. Mm. Particular fields, especially AP biology, AP chemistry, mm, advanced amazing. placement tests for the biology chemistry. Mm. Girls are scoring higher than the boys, mm. and then taking those exams are more than the boys. So those data are showing that and probably our belief might be not really true. But as you said, again, um, it's a, do they interest in other fields, like for example, mathematics or physics or mm -hmm. other good at? And so what basically holds back the girls, according to the science, is the mindset. Mm -hmm. They have actually tested the girls who actually introduced into growth mindset and a fixed mindset. The, the go those girls who actually introduced into growth mindset and then taught them from the very early age, from, from the kindergarten, like three years old, when they actually taught them, 
intelligence is not something is not though, like static. It can be actually developed. It can be um, further um, nourished, right? Mm. And those girls achieved mm. achieved higher at those uh, fields, and then they actually they tend to succeed more. And they are more of like risk taking. And when they fail, they don't see it as a failure. They see it as a like a Challenge. chance to mm -hmm. challenge, a chance to improve themselves. But then, yes. other hand, the other group of the girls who were introduced into the those um, fixed mindset, the intelligence something is inherited, right? Mm -hmm. And even though you are uh, successful, even though you are actually like uh, study a lot, probably you won't succeed kind of mindset. Because those girls thought that they're not good at science. Exactly. Why is it important that women and girls participation in science? In early days, women tend to not to smoke, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it was only the men's thing The customers to do. were, yeah. Yeah, yeah customers men. were only men. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one marketing uh, oh. person uh -huh. saw that uh, there's a 50% of the population can be tapped, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a market there, mm -hmm. losing. He saw it as a, like a loss. If 50% of the population is not participating in science, we are just losing 50% of the, the potential. Mm -hmm. And basically, we are holding back our advancement mm -hmm. in that, in that because way. Because of our unconscious bias. Right. Because of our unconscious bias, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably, um, as some people may say that, like in, especially in the developed world, uh, scientists actually tend to earn higher. Mm -hmm. So it's also a chance for women to improve their family income, and it probably it's also like um, uh, good social status. Social so status, yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Mainly, mm -hmm. we are not tapping the 50% of our population's intelligence. Mm -hmm. Do we have uh, any data or statistics about uh, women's participation in the STEM field in Mongolia? I'm not a gender specialist, so mm -hmm. <coughs> I may actually have missed uh, some data here and there. So basically, mm -hmm. we know that like the scores, I guess the general scores of the girls and boys mm -hmm. when they uh, graduate the high school. Uh, but I'm not exactly sure, and we do have the data um, on how many girls and versus how many boys enter into the universities, right? Mm -hmm. And basically, we tell we we do know that the girls tend to enroll more into the universities. But then again, we I'm not exactly sure if we have data mm -hmm. on how many girls are taking a, a physics, mm -hmm. for example, or mathematics mm -hmm. at the university as a profession and mm -hmm. as and further on like in the engineering, into the engineering. Do you have a family? Um, how do you manage your science career and family life? Well, um, I should say that I'm fortunate and I'm blessed with the very uh, supporting in-laws and uh, also mother-in-law, father-in-law and husband, etc. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm very lucky because not so many people actually do have those kind of supporting system. And so, for example, in the f oftentimes women has to choose between career mm -hmm. or, or family. family. Yeah. You have to actually devote all, almost all of your time into your career. Do you think uh, men have to choose between career and family life? Uh, why do women have to choose between career in science or family life? Well, I can actually uh, talk on behalf of the men, so I don't mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. whether they have to choose or not. Mm -hmm. Now I can actually talk on behalf of the women. Mm -hmm. And it's oftentimes that women consciously or unconsciously, they, ha they com come into their, they come into the the time they have to choose, mm -hmm. more or less. For example, that kind of talk we have, we d when we are in the high school, we talked about the, the career in science, etc., etc. Et and then we don't, we really didn't have the role model back in the old days. And then, for example, 
Barbara McClinton, who uh, she won a Nobel Prize in the, in the medicine field. But then she didn't have any family. Oh. So we were talking about those issues and then we were like, for example, the biology, ecology field, they generally really demanding because had to travel during the summertime and into the, the different parts of the world, world yeah. or mm -hmm. the countryside. So mm -hmm. it's really difficult to manage them both. And so some of my friends, consciously decided that not to pursue career in science mm -hmm. and not to pursue a PhD degree mm -hmm. after they obtained a master's degree in biology. So it's a kind of, it, in Mongolia, mm -hmm. and then there's still uh, those um, different mindsets. We are holding back the women in science. We have to have the data and we have to look into the data mm -hmm. and we have to look into the how many women in the mathematics and how many women is in the physics or something And like how that. we could increase those numbers or... Uh, exactly, mm -hmm. how do we And how we could help them to pursue career in science. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So. Personally, did you have any challenge in your career uh, because of your gender? <laughs> well, um, I guess in some sense, yes. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I was uh, rejected um, when I was undergrad student, um, when I wanted to um, participate in the, the project. And mm -hmm. my teacher, uh, he meant really well mm -hmm. for me, but then um, he thought that the, it's hard for a girl to go into the countryside and oh, for and field trip for the field trip. Oh, so you were excluded from a field trip because you were female. Yes, oh. um, and also like um, my family. When we talk about the career, they told me like uh, maybe the career. secondary school mm -hmm. teacher is more appropriate for you or something like that. Mm -hmm. So something like that. Mm -hmm. So there is still some kind of, uh, because women bear children, right? Mm -hmm. So the people think that the woman has to bear children, take care of the take family, care of the family. So mm -hmm. it's uh, difficult for them to actually choose their career as a scientist and mm -hmm. career as a the researcher. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So at the same time, uh, we have to actually eliminate those bias. So I have, there's one study that showed that uh, uh, they basically tested the cognitive abilities mm -hmm. of the boys and girls and oh, how they were different. And they f what they found is that the girls scored less in the special cognitive ability. Like, for example, when they're throwing a ball or something like that, mm -hmm. right? Or People say that women are not good at their driving car, right? Yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's related to the, the special cognitive ability. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, for example, in my uh, uh, kids' kindergarten, they teach that the girls like to play dolls. Boys like to play with the, the cars oh. or Lego. Mm. So they teach it in that way. And they, they from it's that early age. From that early age. It's ingrained in their brain that the girls tend to play with the dolls and nursing, mm -hmm. and the girl boys on the head, they play with the cars and with the Lego to, uh, toys. Building, constructing. Building, constructing. And so they have more a uh, chance to develop those special cognitive abilities and play with the, like, just playing basketball in the street, right? Mm -hmm. So, but then on the head, on the head, girls, they, like, have to cook, they have to take care of their younger siblings, etc. Mm -hmm. et yes. So from the early age, if we actually um, treat the boys and girls uh, differently, and then holding back the girls to develop those cognitive abilities, how can we say that the girls are inherently not good at those fields, right? Mm -hmm. And that cognitive ability is very important for engineering field, for example. Mm -hmm. So if we really want, um, um, if we really want to tap into that potential, the woman potential, right? And if we really want our whole population 
working together uh, towards the sustainable development or this growth, we really need to change, first of all, that mindset, I guess. And second of all, from the early on, educators and kindergarten teachers have to actually eliminate that uh, bias and give them equal chance from the early on. That's right. Thank you, Dr. Anderma. So my last question, <coughs> what do you think we should do as a government, private entities, educators, and private citizens um, to help women and girls to participate in STEM-related fields. You just uh, mentioned about educators should uh, be aware of their unconscious bias to give equal chance of learning for both boys and girls. Mm -hmm. So um, what should government do or individual citizens? Well, in individual sentences, we can be more supportive, I guess. Mm -hmm. We can actually um, realize those biases. For example, uh, as I said before, like my teacher, he meant really well mm -hmm. because he, if he was afraid that the, the girl in the field trip and when the girl is left alone in the field, mm -hmm. she might actually get harassed. Injured or mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if that trait is real, individuals. We have to realize that trait is real and then we have to actually um, change our attitude towards those kind of stories. That's a something individual we can do. Yeah. Um, as a private entities, I guess um, we have to be aware of those policies. Adopting those gender policies is might be actually one step towards the, uh, including more women into the, those working environment, mm. I assume. Um, as a government, yeah, we can start from the data exactly. that we're lacking, right? Yes, mm -hmm. we can start uh, collecting mm -hmm. data, how many women are actually pursuing a career in physics or mathematics or technology mm -hmm. versus boys. Mm -hmm. And then probably thereon, we can actually do more research into the what's exactly holding back. And then mm -hmm. we can actually tap into the other researches that have been already done mm -hmm. and then talk about what kind of measures we can do, right? Mm -hmm. And that, that might be the, the government's job. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Anurma, very much. Today we had Dr. Anurma Sharhu. We talked about women and girls participation in science-related fields. Thank you for staying with us. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.